Hello, uh, welcome to the presentation on LoRa and LoRa Van in Zephyr. My name is Manivaran Sadasivam. I work as a kernel engineer at the <clears throat> Qualcomm learning team of Linaro. Uh, so I contribute to uh, various open source projects uh, such as Linux kernel, Uboot, Zephyr, MRA library, etc. And I do maintain few steps uh, here and there. So today uh, I'm going to talk about LoRa and LoRa Van in Zephyr. And uh, this presentation is uh, not about a deep dive into LoRa and LoRaWAN technologies, but instead I'll be focusing on uh, the addition of the LoRa and LoRaWAN wireless technologies into the Zephyr routers. And uh, I'll give a quick introduction on what is Zephyr, LoRa, and LoRaWAN. And uh, I'll uh, share some thoughts on uh, uh, why Zephyr needs LoRa and LoRaWAN technologies. And then uh, I'll uh, talk, a, talk a little bit about the history of uh, adding this uh, support into Zephyr uh, with various uh, pull requests. And then uh, I'm gonna talk about the community which is growing around this effort. And then of course the future plans. All right, let's get started. So, okay, what is Zephyr? So uh, Zephyr is the scalable uh, small footprint real-time operating system for the resource constraint systems with devices like microcontrollers. And uh, it is highly configurable in the sense that we can uh, strip down most of the features. But in these days, Zephyr uh, is extending its scope, which means that, uh, uh, for instance, uh, there is a 64-bit architecture support in Zephyr, um, like it can run on the Cortex-A53 processor from ARM. So uh, there are talks going on uh, around making Zephyr as the future hypervisor and bootloader for Linux. So clearly Zephyr is not constrained onto the MCUs, but its scope is getting extended. And of course, Zephyr supports multiple architectures, uh, not only ARM, it supports uh, x86 from the beginning. And then more recently, it started supporting RISC-V and the next tensor. And one of the nice features about uh, Zephyr is that it offers rich functionality. For instance, uh, in networking, it offers BLE. Zephyr has its own BLE networking stack, and then uh, it supports Wi-Fi, OpenThread, and uh, the other peripherals like USB display modem. It's already there in Zephyr. So it's a cluster of functionalities, I would say. And Zephyr is truly open source in the sense that it uh, offers the most permissible license, which is Apache 2.0. Of course, it's of, often loved by everyone in the community. Okay, so let's look into LoRa. So LoRa is, a, is an acronym of long range. So it is a LP1 wireless technology based on the chip spread spectrum modulation technique. So it was uh, invented by Cyclio, a French company, and then it was later acquired by Semtech. And then Semtech started selling the LoRa, van, LoRa radios uh, based on this modulation technique. So LoRa operates in a license-free sub gigahertz frequency band, which uh, varies with occasions. Um, for instance, uh, it operates in the 865 megahertz in India and then 868 megahertz in Europe, etc. And not only frequency, the data rate and also the spreading factor also varies with locations and we have restrictions based on uh, the countries. And Zephyr is a perfect candidate for low data rate and then uh, long range applications uh, like the smart city and then industrial applications where we don't need to uh, so send high amount of data uh, in a short period of time, but we do need to cover long range distances and the data rate is actually low. And what is LoRaWAN? So LoRaWAN is the Mac layer. Um, it sits on top of the LoRa. So in terms of the OS, OSI model, we can say that uh, LoRaWAN is the Mac layer and LoRa is the PHI layer. So LoRa protocol is closed in the sense it is proprietary to Semtech. Uh, on the other hand, LoRaWAN specification is open to the public. And then there is also a reference implementation available in the GitHub repository so that everyone can just use in their end product straight away. And LoRaWAN works in a star-based topology. So the end nodes uh, transmit data to the centralized gateway uh, over here. And then the gateway will relay the uh, messages to the network server. 
So I have simplified the network server part uh, because that usually there are three components here. One is the network server, and that is joint server, and that is application server. But uh, in a, a typical system, these three can be contained in a single uh, piece of server. That's why I just oversimplified it. And the communication between the end node and the gateway happens through the LoRa technology. And then the communication between gateway and uh, the network server in cloud happens through the TCP IP mechanism. Um, and then uh, I should note that the LoRa WAN is actually a software implementation, not the hardware one as like LoRa. I haven't seen any, uh, or I should say that there isn't any hardware implementation of LoRa WAN. It's all uh, running as a software stack in a dedicated MCU, and then uh, which in turn communicates with the LoRa PHY using the communication protocol like uh, SPI. And the LoRaWAN specification is governed by LoRa Alliance, uh, which is a nonprofit association of uh, more than 500 companies invested in the LoRa technology. So it takes care of the specification and makes sure it gets evolved to uh, 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 meet the future needs. Okay, so here comes the question. Why Zephyr needs LoRa and LoRaWAN? Um, so, so far, uh, Zephyr is mostly used as uh, the autos for IoT applications. But in order to make Zephyr as an autos for industrial grade applications, there are certain uh, parameters needs to be con uh, considered. And first one is uh, multitasking. And Zephyr is already uh, excelled in that because it has the support for preemptible and then the cooperative threads. So it can handle multitasking really well, like this guy. And then uh, it has the support for uh, Mr. C guideline. I mean, Zephyr is not fully Mr. C compliant, but uh, the process already started. And then uh, there were several pull requests merged in order to make uh, Zephyr the Mr. C compliant. And I'm hope that, I hope that in future, we can see that uh, Zephyr is uh, fully Mr. C compliant. And that's one of the requirement in order to meet the industrial grade uh, certification. And for security, Zephyr is already pretty good in terms of security when you compare with the other open source autosses available in the market. So Zephyr has its own security technical steering committee, which governs the security processes. And then uh, there is a security guideline available for uh, the uh, companies and the individuals who are willing to uh, make secure applications uh, using Zephyr. And of course, there are support ex uh, available for uh, cryptographic algorithms using the external uh, trusted repositories like uh, Ember TLS. But what is really missing today uh, is the communication medium, uh, which is used for transferring the data uh, for the industrial applications. As I said before, Zephyr is primarily focused on IoT applications. So uh, it has support for networking protocols such as uh, BLE, Wi-Fi, which operates in the 2.4 gig range. But unfortunately, that frequency range can be used for industrial applications as it is overly po polluted uh, because all of our uh, consumer devices are already operating in the same frequency range and it may cause interference. So what we really need is a communication protocol which can operate in a less polluted space. And that's where LoRa comes into picture. Since uh, LoRa operates in the sub gigahertz frequency range. Uh, it is less prone to interference and uh, it can cover long range distances. And in the industries, we don't need uh, n number of 100 sensors sitting in a single industry and then talking to each other using a mesh network. We don't need that kind of setup. What we really need is a, a per device, is a device per compartment which uh, sends low data, often. Uh, for an hour or so, and then it can it should be able to cover the entire building or the entire industry. And uh, the same requirement often uh, satisfies for the smart city applications also. And this makes LoRa an ideal candidate for making Zephyr as the industrial grade autos. And that's the whole motivation for adding the LoRa and LoRa when supporting to Zephyr. Okay, so here comes the history. Uh, uh, as like most of the features in Zephyr, uh, the LoRa support was uh, started uh, by opening a GitHub issue in the Zephyr repository by a community user. 
And after some time, Kate Stewart from Linux Foundation opened a feature request uh, in order to make LoRa in the official plans for Zephyr. And uh, a couple of months later, Ding Tao, a community member, opened the first uh, RFC pull request into the Zephyr repository for, uh, for making the LoRa support into Zephyr. But that is on catch. It, that pull request was incomplete uh, in the sense that it had no API and board support. And the author made it clear that he didn't want uh, the pull request to be merged into mainline, but he just wanted to share what he was working on so that others can also benefit from that. Um, so in that PR, he just uh, reused the uh, LoRaWAN reference repository by Semtech, which is called LoRaMac node. And then uh, he added support for a couple of LoRa radios like SX1272 and then SX1276. So in that PR, there were discussions going on around the basic API design how the LoRaWAN, uh, LoRaWAN code should exist in Zephyr, et cetera. But unfortunately, the uh, PR was closed by the author since it, he made it clear that he had no intentions on merging into Zephyr. But clearly, it made as a starting point for the LoRa support in Zephyr. So uh, I took it forward, and then I submitted an RFC uh, pull request after some time, addressing all the review comments given in the initial PR. So in that PR, I proposed a basic API and then the uh, code design for LoRa. And I should note that I haven't added the LoRa WAN support uh, in that PR because I wanted to smart, smart, start small and then build it big. If I add LoRa WAN support, then I thought that it would make the process more complex. So the best way to get something into Zephyr is to make it small and then uh, uh, so that other people can also uh, review the code easily and get it merged. And for the PR, I used uh, 96 boards Vistrio as the target platform. Um, that is one golden tool in Zephyr, uh, is that uh, we need to have a target platform for any feature we are adding to Zephyr in order to make sure that it, it is validated properly, it's working properly, and others can also test it. So that's why I used 96 boards Vistrio, which is a IoT based for uh, um, 96 boards uh, designed by uh, Rack Wireless and then it had the LoRa radio embedded on it. So uh, I added board support for it in the pull request. And then uh, I also reused, uh, I also wrote the SX1276 driver from scratch. So I hadn't reused the uh, existing LoRaWAN uh, re uh, reference implementation by Semtech. The reason was like, uh, I wanted to host the native LoRa drivers in Zephyr and only depend on the Semtech repo for LoRaWAN stack. But unfortunately, that idea was turned on by the community, and then the PR was snagged. So the suggestion was given to me you know, to reuse the existing LoRaWAN um, repository because it had support for various LoRa drivers. Um, you know, so the reason was not to reinvent, reinvent the wheel again in the Zephyr. So, and it offers more code maintainability also. And I agree with that. So I went back to the drawing board and then I reworked my PR. And then I came up with the next version of the PR. And this time I reused the reference repository by Semtech. But still I haven't added LoRaWAN support. Um, and I still uh, stick to the point of uh, start small and then build it big. But I added the Semtech LoRaWAN node repository as a Zephyr module. So the way it works is uh, in order to make uh, Zephyr depend on any other external uh, repositories like this one. We need to uh, make it as a Zephyr module. Uh, we need to clone the upstream repository into the Zephyr organization. And then the guy who owns this repository need to make sure that uh, whatever the change which happens in the upstream is getting in sync with the cloned repository in Zephyr. So uh, this is a proper way of adding a module uh, in Zephyr. So this time I got positive reviews from the community. So uh, I just splitted the board specific parts from the pull request and then I merged it separately. So roughly after uh, three months of time uh, going through the reviews, uh, the PR got merged. So it was a moment for celebration, but I didn't stop. And then I straight away started working on the LoRaWAN implementation. All right. So uh, Right now, there is a basic API in Zephyr, which provides the LoRa point-to-point -point support uh, between two end nodes. 
So we have the config API, which is just the configuration of the LoRa radio based on the uh, modem config structure. So it, this structure will have all the parameters required for the stack to configure the device. And then we have the API for send. Uh, so it takes a buffer and then a buffer length. So it will just transmit the buffer uh, to the end device. And then we'll have separate API for receiving the data uh, from the end node also. So I have also uh, added on sample application in the pull request, uh, which uh, requires two uh, LoRa nodes. One will be sending the data and another one will be receiving the data just to exercise the basic functionalities of the API. All right. So this is the radio configuration structure, uh, which is uh, used for configuring the modem. So we have the frequency parameter. Um, it defines the frequency range in which the device is operating. And then we have parameters for configuring the bandwidth, data rate, coding rate, preamble length, and then the TX power. And that is one final parameter, uh, which is called TX. And it is used to configure the modem for uh, transmission or receive. So right now, that is one limitation uh, in the LoRaWAN code. Uh, for uh, configuring the modem each time uh, for sending and receiving. If we want to send continuously, we can configure one time and then start sending the data. But if we want to switch to receive, then we need to reconfigure the device and then start receiving the data. I hope that this limitation will be addressed in uh, future days. All right, so here comes the next PR for adding the LoRa band support in Zephyr. So, uh, this time I had some experience of handling uh, uh, the pull request and then uh, I reused the uh, comments which were given for the LoRa pull request and then uh, I tried to avoid as much as uh, the mistakes I did in the first PR in this LoRaWAN PR. So this time I placed the uh, core LoRaWAN code into the subsystem uh, directory and then the API under include directory. So in the LoRaWAN PR, I reused the existing LoRa drivers, uh, which were already present in the uh, Zephyr repository, not through a direct way, like uh, calling the config and send and receive API, but indirectly through the Semtech repo, which has the callbacks uh, into the Zephyr LoRa API. So for this PR, uh, there was no modification required in the LoRa Mac node repo but I just need to enable a few drivers like the cryptographic ones um, for adding the LoRaWAN, but other than that, it was very straightforward. But I should uh, stress the fact that designing the API for LoRaWAN is uh, somewhat hard when compared to LoRa. The reason is uh, because of the synchronous and asynchronous nature of the LoRaWAN specification. Uh, for instance, LoRaWAN send or the uplink is, an, is a synchronous operation but LoRa and receive or the downlink is an asynchronous operation. And we also have the blocking and non-blocking states like the send can block for n amount of time, et cetera. So this makes somewhat tricky for uh, the API design. So again, I wanted to make things simpler. So I just went with only down uh, uplink, not the downlink. And then there is one more challenge for storing the keys and states in the end node. Uh, since the keys uh, are stored in the network server and also in the end node, we need some kind of secure mechanism to store the keys uh, safely in the end node so that it won't get tampered. But uh, for the initial PR, I didn't consider that. And the initial PR supported both OTAA and then ABP join methods. So OTAA is a dynamic way of joining, uh, to the, joining the LoRaWAN server. And ABP is a static way of joining the LoRaWAN server. And I had only added support for class A device class, and there was still support needed for class B and class C. And the region static is static, which means that uh, before running the application, we need to uh, make, I mean, we need to uh, let the LoRaWAN stack know what kind of region it is operating, the device is getting operated, which means uh, it can be India or it can be Europe, et cetera. And of course, there is no support for downlink as of now. And after posting, posting the PR, the reviewer has gone for eight months of time, um, mostly because of me uh, working in a spare time on this project, and also uh, the delays in getting the reviewers. 
uh, finding this uh, PR. And uh, roughly after eight months of time, this PR got burst just a couple of weeks before. Yeah, it took a lot of time. Okay, so here is the basic API for uh, providing the uplink support in the LoRaWAN. So we have the join API, uh, which is used to join, uh, join the network server using the LoRaWAN join config. And uh, as like LoRa, it has the <clears throat> parameters contained in this whole structure. And uh, we need to call this API uh, with the join method, whether we are joining using OTA or ABP. And then uh, it will return uh, zero if the network join is successful or the negative error code if failure. And then we need to start the AP, uh, start the LoRaWAN stack uh, in order to send or receive the data. But right now we just have the send API, which is used for sending the data to the network server. So, so again, we, have the, we are passing the buffer and then we are passing the buffer length and then there are flags, uh, which uh, determines the type of behavior of the message, either it can be confirmed or it can be unconfirmed. Confirmed means we, are, we should be waiting uh, for getting the confirmed message from the network server. If unconfirmed means it can be, it will just return after sending the data. All right, so these are the parameters uh, used for uh, joining the network and then uh, sending or receiving the data in the LoRaWAN. So we have two structures uh, for OTAA and then ABP, and uh, both are declared as union because you will be using one at the point of time. And then uh, we will have the join UI network key app key. So for OTAA, the session keys uh, are derived using this app key, but in the case of ABP, the session keys are stored in the stored statically in the device itself. So uh, every time when the session keys get changed in the network. Uh, it needs to get changed in the device also if you are using ABP. So the keys needs to be stored statically in the device. Um, we can't actually uh, modify the keys dynamically. Uh, that's not yet supported. And then uh, all these uh, joining parameters are based on the LoRaWAN version 1.1 specification. And uh, there are plans ongoing in order to uh, store these keys in a secure element uh, of the device. Uh, just to make the keys don't get tampered using an external factor. All right, so while working on the LoRa and LoRaWAN support, uh, uh, developers from various part of the region uh, reached out to me, willing to co collaborate in this effort. So uh, for that uh, purpose, I created a Slack channel, which is called Zephyr LoRaWAN, and then I invited all the members uh, who are willing to uh, collaborate. And then I mentioned this Slack channel in the LoRaWAN PR itself, so that uh, people who are all willing to try out the PR will notice this Slack channel and then uh, uh, join. So that's what's the whole idea. And then as like uh, I expected, more members started join uh, in this Slack channel, and then they started contributing to the existing LoRaWAN and then LoRa code. So they submitted several PRs and then uh, they started improving the LoRa support. So as like through any true open source project, this started getting traction. All right, so uh, we are end, we are, uh, we came to an end of the presentation and then uh, let's uh, see the future plans uh, on the to-do list. So we need to add the class B and then the class C device classes. Um, and then we need to add the secure elements support for storing the keys and states. This is pretty important because if you want to deploy uh, the Zephyr LoRaWAN in any uh, product, we need to have the secure element in place for storing the keys. Uh, so this will take a top priority for us to uh, work on. And then we need to add downlink support also. Uh, and then what, that is an interesting feature which needs to be added. So a lot of the LoRaWAN vendors, uh, they have a, a customized firmware running on their module, which exposes uh, 80 commands that uh, communicated using the UART protocol. But what we really have as of now in Zephyr is uh, 
we'll talk to the LoRa radio directly using the SPI protocol uh, from the target MCU running Zephyr. But uh, we need to support the AT commands that feature also because uh, there, there are times where we cannot customize the end device firmware and then we have to rely on the AT command set for uh, uh, achieving the LoRa WAN uh, networking. So uh, it, that support needs to be added as well. And then of course, uh, we need to add more LoRa modems also. Right, okay. So uh, that's it uh, for this presentation. I hope everyone really enjoyed. And then um, uh, I, I'm expecting everyone who are willing to try out this feature to actively collaborate, join the Slack channel, and then uh, contribute to this project. Thanks a lot.